Hey, Sun here, I'm a privacy and security researcher and you're watching The Privacy Guides. In today's episode, I wanna show you how ProtonMail does not encrypt all email by design and what one can do about it. So some of you are sending emails to me using ProtonMail. And once in a while, when we have more sensitive topics being discussed, I mentioned that that conversation is not encrypted. And most of the time, the person at the other end is like, Holy bananas, are you kidding? I thought that ProtonMail encrypted all emails. And I can totally understand why. When we go on ProtonMail's website and we kind of look at how ProtonMail is advertised, uh, we really clearly see end-to-end -end encryption in bold. And that kind of makes us believe that ProtonMail encrypts emails in the same way Signal encrypts messages. When one uses Signal, uh, everything is encrypted by default and by design. That means that one cannot use Signal and not have messages be encrypted. This is not the case at all on ProtonMail. So if we have a look here at how ProtonMail works, uh, if we go to send an email, and I'm gonna send an email to this test uh, email account of mine uh, that is not on ProtonMail, and let's say here, test, yo, yo, yo. Uh, we can see here that it is PGP signed, but the, there is no lock. Uh, so, and it's PGP signed because I enable that. By default, this is not even enabled. So if I go and send the email, I did not get any kind of warning that says, you know, hey, this email will not be encrypted. And, and I think that's where the biggest misconception of ProtonMail originates from. One can just send an email thinking that it is encrypted and it's not. Uh, so if we have a look at this here in my email client, uh, come on, come on, come on. If we look at it, we can see the content of it is yo, yo, yo. And I can see that a pub key was added, which is all great. But uh, besides it being signed cryptographically, the content is in clear text. That means that, you know, I'm able to see it without typing a passphrase for my YubiKey or anything. And it also means that my email provider can see the content of this email. Um, email is really bad by design when it comes to privacy. When I send an email to you, what happens is even if I have the highest level of InfoSec and OpSec, if you're on Gmail, that email will live on my servers, which potentially are encrypted, but it would, that same exact email and whole conversation will also be held by you on your server. And that means that Gmail and, you know, anyone essentially that has a warrant can have access to that content. That conversation is by any means not private. Um, that said, how can we improve on this? Well, when we create a new email on ProtonMail and we, let's say we'll call it test number two, uh, there is a little lock here that one can click on here and then one can include a password. I would recommend putting a pretty long password that is generated completely randomly. There's a whole bunch of episodes on the privacy guides about this. Um, but once we set that password, uh, if I send that email again, uh, what we'll see is that we will be asked, or the recipient will be asked to go on a website, enter that password, and then that recipient will be able to read the email and or reply. Uh, what that means is that password needs to be shared in real life or true signal, for instance, with the recipient. And that is like really weird in the context of email. I don't see people doing this, um, but it is a way to send an email privately. And I guess that password can be reused, which is not great because it does not provide forward secrecy, but it's better than nothing. Email is just a really bad or weak protocol when it comes to privacy. So I'm not trying to bash on ProtonMail. I just think that their advertising is a little misleading. Uh, so if we look at that email here, we can then click view message that will pop open Firefox. And then if we enter said uh, password, we can then decrypt it and or answer. That is super cool. But as, as I said, that requires uh, sharing a password outside of email, which has to be done through a secure channel uh, or else, I mean, we're it's just, not secure, right? Um, there is a better way, thankfully. And that is the way that I've been using in the context of PGP forever. I have a really good guide that will be uh, published as an episode shortly on how to create really hardened PGP private keys. 
I'll link to that in the description. And I'll also link to an episode on how one can do this encryption stuff using command line, which I believe is more secure than doing it in a browser. Again, I'll link to this in the description. But the Proton way of doing this, if we go into contacts and we create a new contact, uh, actually, we won't create a new contact here. If we go into contacts and we click on hello to, we can then click on email settings and we can then go into show advanced PGP settings. And here one can actually upload a public key. So on my website, one can download my PGP public key. Um, there's again, a whole episode that talks about how to verify the integrity of this. Uh, I'll show you where that one is here. If you go to send me an email, uh, you can learn more about PGP public keys here. And uh, one actually explains, I believe, let me see here. Yeah, you yeah, verify web of trust. If you click here, it brings you to this. And uh, let me see here. Yeah, that's what I wanted. So it says, you know, go on sunnewton.com and make sure that that fingerprint is there. So that's what is here in the footer. And it also says, woo, sorry for scrolling like this. It also says go on, you know, GitHub or go on YouTube. So we'll just do YouTube here. If you go on the YouTube uh, about page, I also publish my pub key fingerprint. That means that if someone wanted to compromise my cryptographic identity, um, they would have to be able to hack all of those different platforms, which is very unlikely. Now, I would have wanted to show you this, but I'm guessing uh, YouTube is not happy that I'm on tour, but nonetheless, you can verify this on your computer. Um, so yeah, back here, once we downloaded that pub key from my website, again, that is available on the footer of all pages. Uh, one can upload that pub key here. And once this is done, one can also encrypt emails and sign emails by default. And once we save this here uh, and go back to creating a new email, uh, let's send that to hello and we'll call it test number two. I'm not, maybe we're at test number three here, but I'm not sure. Uh, and now we can see that the lock is there. So email is PGP encrypted, recipient key validation failed, email address not found among user IDs. That is the case because my PGP uh, public key is bound to hello at Sunnuts and not hello to, so that is normal, but I will still be able to decrypt it. I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, and then if we click send, that email will be encrypted to Sun's pub key, uh, which is pretty neat. So if we go here in the email client, oh yeah, we were at test number three, damn it, Sun. Uh, let's have a look. It always takes a little while because you can undo sending an email if you've sent it by mistake. Uh, but what will happen in a moment is uh, if we look at the content of the email, we can see that it is PGP encrypted and my pub key is there. That means that when I receive an email like this, I'll show you which settings you need to configure in ProtonMail if you want to communicate with me uh, or other people that do this kind of PGP stuff using command line. But I have this payload and I have the encrypted message and I have the pub key. That means that I can then import that pub key into my PGP key ring and encrypt a response when replying. Uh, so let's see here what the settings that I recommend are. If we go into settings, go to settings, uh, then here we have uh, encryption and keys. Uh, this should be enabled, this should be enabled, this should be enabled, and I recommend using PGP in line. Uh, this here, PGP, uh, M-I-M-E, MIM, uh, anyways, that is for people with email clients that have PGP integrations. I don't do PGP stuff within the email client. I prefer doing it through command line. Uh, so essentially these settings here are really friendly with you know recipients who do PGP using command line. Um, yeah, so I hope that was insightful. Uh, I think that a lot of people would benefit from knowing this. I mean, the amount of people who write, send me emails thinking that they are encrypted and they're not, uh, it's kind of scary. So hopefully this will be helpful and yeah, I'll see you soon, bye.